Selective reporting, just concentrate on the positive things. And here's the biggest explanation for most school improvement, I think, which is you just make your school more attractive to a better class of pupil or parent. You know, you get the uniform looking smart and you've, you've found an orchestra and all that, and then you'll get some nice middle class kids coming in, your results will go up. That isn't school improvement, sorry. Uh, it's a lot easier than the real stuff, though. So, you didn't hear me say don't do that. But don't, if you do it, don't kid yourself that you've actually improved anyone's learning. Okay, so this is something else we've done for the Education Endowment Foundation. We wrote this guide, DIY evaluation guide. The, the idea is that if you're a teacher and you know nothing about research methodology or evaluation, you could read this and you would know slightly more than nothing. So you wouldn't really be able to design a good study yourself, but you might be better able to judge what's a good study and you might be on the way to doing it. Um, and that's a pretty hard challenge, actually. This is our first stab at it. We're thinking now about um, uh, reworking that. So anybody who's got any, anyone who's used it, that would be really good to hear. Anyone who thinks it's great, that would be good to hear. Anyone who thinks it's rubbish, that would also be good to hear. Uh, especially if you could say it in a slightly more constructive way than that. Because we do want to improve it. Or talk to the EEF people as well about that. Okay, so that's it. Uh, research is not great. Some of it's good. Just four things you need to do. How hard can that be? Good luck. Thank you. Okay, I think we've got 15 minutes for questions. Ofsted is the question. Where does Ofsted fit in? Um, okay, Ofsted, in my view, is part of the problem here, not part of the solution. Um, it's part of the problem because it is not a research-led or an evidence, well, for all sorts of reasons. There's all sorts of history and so on. But for me, the biggest thing that I would like to see change about Ofsted is that they would actually understand and, and make some use of research evidence uh, in what they do. So, for example, in relation to observation. If I, as a researcher, if I'm asked to do an observational study, those questions that I had up there, I hope, I mean, you know, maybe not every researcher would ask the same questions, but those are the questions I would ask. And yet in, what, how long have we had Ofsted now? 20 years? To my knowledge, they've only ever done one study that comes close to answer, and it's not a great one, and that was in the, the early 90s. So, you know, there's a bit of a gap there. And there's all sorts of other examples I could give. So, um, that would help. I think if, if people weren't so scared of them, it would help. Is that their fault, or is that your fault? I don't know. Um, I sometimes do, so, you know, I said I wanted to upset people. Um, it sometimes feels as though teachers are a little bit spineless in the way they they kind of cower to Ofsted. Come back at me at that one. Yeah. Okay, so if I repeat that question. So the first question was about lesson observation. Am I saying it doesn't work or that we don't know whether it works? Is that, is that? Yeah. Yeah, the latter. We don't know whether it works. I'm sure there will be some ways of doing lesson observation and feeding back that will benefit students' learning. The problem is we don't know what they are. And I'm also pretty sure there will be some that make no difference to learning and I'm pretty sure also there'll be some that will actually inhibit learning, genuine learning, because people will chase after nonsense in response to observation. But the truth is we don't know. And we, so, you know, we ought to be saying, hey, we don't know, let's find out. Uh, the other question about the DIY guide and uh, effect size and how do you calculate or why? Well, so how effective is, um, the guidance there or the, or the whole idea of trying to calculate an effect size within a, a school study. So this is a challenge. I don't know is the answer. So the question is whether, um, whether the kind of effect sizes you could calculate from a small scale study, uh, uh, you know, how, how useful is that? Have I got the question right yet? Okay. I don't know is the answer. I really don't know. I think it's quite hard to do it right and lots of people will, you know, struggle with that. I think uh, there are all sorts of problems with small studies like that anyway. Uh, what are we going to do with them? How do we support teachers in, in being able to do that? And we have no infrastructure for doing that. Um, I think EEF is keen to work with teachers who are keen to think about questions like that. 
and it would be good to have a conversation. So I'd certainly be keen to be involved in that.